Hey all, this is just a quick little announcement letting you know that the in-game multiplayer level editor framework is now up and available on the marketplace. So I'm going to give you a brief overview as to kind of what all is provided with the example content. So in the description, you have a link to the plugin, the example project repository, which is basically what you see here that is already just a complete setup project, as well as a link to the tutorial series. So if we press play, and I'll go ahead and play with multiple, as you can assume by the title, it everything is replicated. So just by default, everything just kind of is built in nature. So we have our alt duplication, our transforms, and we can go between local and world. So I'm in world, I'll go to local and modify the translation that way. Delete, all that kind of stuff. Your basic gizmo functionality. And same thing goes with adding new stuff. So I'll add in some stairs, just drop them right here. It, obviously it snaps to the uh, closest world position. We have our world settings, so time of day, and our brightness, so we'll do three. Let's just do eight. And all these are kind of configurable to where you can tweak them to where, for example, if you don't want clients to be able to change the world settings, only the server, you have the ability to do that. Uh, same thing goes with some other stuff. So for example, the outliner here, it currently only shows the stuff that I have placed. So if I select my stairs, that's only because I have spawned in those stairs. If I go ahead and duplicate this guy, you can see it's added the cube. So I have the cube and the stairs. So that is an optional thing. So if we plug this guy back in to get all actors, so some of the example stuff has some options, obviously. And I go to the outliner. Now I have everything like so. So yeah, that's that wall back there. So things have different options that you can use, and it's really just kind of up to you to basically do what you want with them. So we have a full content browser. The entire UI is built in a way that is, let me rephrase that. The entire framework is built in a way that you're supposed to be able to make any style of UI that you want. So for example, you don't have to follow along with this at all. You can very easily make, or use this as a reference if you wish, a completely different UI that is built for your taste or the ideas that you have that you want your game to have. By default, the example comes with the content browser, the world settings, the details. So for example, if I select this guy here, I can see that it has its materials. I can change the materials to whatever I want. It works for multiple meshes. So for example, this item here has multiple meshes. So here's the mesh one and here's the mesh two, as well as multiple material meshes. So this item has Two, two meshes and each mesh has two materials. So I'll make this white and white and red and red. And same thing goes with this little guy. It's just an example with the uh, materials there. So uh, let's go ahead and cover the saving. So save and load. I'll just make a new one called demo and we'll take the material changes and I'll go ahead and just add some stairs. So we can save the map, press play, load the map, and there we go. We have our stairs, the materials have been loaded. And for example, if I play with multiple, so here we have a client. Let's go ahead and just fly a load out of the way. Go ahead and load that map back up. And the client now has those same settings, the meshes, and all the materials applied that have been saved to the level. You have some basic flying controls, so straight up and straight down, because it comes with a movement component that's kind of built specifically for a level editor style uh, camera. We can scroll wheel up to fly faster, scroll wheel back to fly slower, that kind of stuff. We have our undo and redo, so I'll move this guy around. I can control Z, control Y to undo and redo. Uh, the character has some various options, so for example, grabbing stuff. If you don't want multiple selection, you can just use find and grab and leave a pen selection unchecked. So here's with just the left mouse button, it's just a single selection, and when you hold down shift and left click, you append your selection. You have some different things for, for example, deletion. So you can choose to delete only the owned act or the only actors that you own. And you can choose to basically have your copy and paste change a little bit. So for example, if I go through and I'll select that guy, the stairs and the bump, I control C and I control V, it now pasted my selection. And if I uncheck, paste at copied location, this will go through and it'll paste it pretty much wherever it is set. So I'll select the same meshes again, control C, 
and I'll go over here and control V. And here's my new selection. It has been pasted at my mouse cursor. So that's just kind of a brief rundown on how you can kind of see everything. Everything is set up very simply. It's all driven through a component, kind of like all my other stuff, and you can drive it solely through there. So it's a very simple setup, extremely easy to use, and you're not tied down like some other stuff, like some other plugins where you're limited to the UI that they provide or at least some sort of setup from it. You can very easily expand and change your UI to suit whatever you want. So that's going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to hop in my Discord and I'll try to answer them. All the links will be provided in the description and I'll see you in the next video.